In the 1960s, U.S. automakers were in a horsepower and go-fast arms race to score drag racing victories at tracks across the country. Back then, manufacturers were keen on getting their brands and cars in front of race spectators, TV viewers, and featured in magazine articles as a form of marketing, especially if their cars won. They even coined an adage for it, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. In this video, we take a look at some of the purpose-built Chrysler factory drag racing warriors from the 1960s. So let's time travel back to the 60s and see what Chrysler's Need for Speed wizards had cooked up to reign supreme on the drag strip and make history with their legendary creations. This car is considered among the first of the muscle car breed that would become so commonplace in the later 1960s. The Dodge 330 and Plymouth Savoy were Chrysler's stablemates that benefited from stuffing a big block engine into intermediate bodied cars. The cars were engineered for speed, but not so much for comfort. Lightweighting was the name of the game for this car with its stamped steel front sheet metal and bumpers replaced with aluminum versions, as well as the removal of its heater and radio. Under the hood was a very special 426 cubic inch power plant that benefited from engine components developed for drag racing by the Ram Chargers Club, a group of Chrysler engineers devoted to Mopar drag strip dominance. The Chrysler RB wedge engine was a precursor to the Hemi that would come later on and included a wedge-shaped upper combustion chamber cross-section profile and had dual four-barrel carburetors. These cars were drag strip terrors for many years in the 1960s with the Stage 2 designated engine cranking out 425 horsepower that could hustle a skilled pilot down the quarter mile in about 11 seconds. Nineteen sixty-four was the year that Chrysler's new four twenty-six Hemi engine debuted in NASCAR in a Plymouth Belvedere. It dominated so hard that NASCAR banned it for the following nineteen sixty-five season. Nineteen sixty-four was also the year that the Hemi showed up in Chrysler's lightweight drag package cars. Once again, the Dodge three hundred and thirty and Plymouth Savoy. These appeared mostly factory stock, except for the hood scoop in the presence of only one windshield wiper. What did one get when the A864 option was specified on the order form? A bunch of content deletion to make the car as light as possible. That meant no heater, no radio, and a battery relocated to the trunk. Included though was an aluminum hood, fenders, doors, and front bumper in place of the steel versions. What you also got with the A864 option was the race version 426 Hemi with two four-barrel offset carburetors on an aluminum intake manifold, a 12.5 to 1 compression ratio, tubular exhaust headers, and a car mostly ready to go racing. They dominated in the Superstock Eliminator class and could put a quarter mile behind them in the low 11 second range. This was the beginning of the age of Hemi. Chrysler's new Hemi engine saw one of its first appearances in the Dodge Coronet and Plymouth Belvedere in 1965, when buyers could choose order code WO51 to turn these intermediate Chryslers into drag strip vanquishers. Known as the A990 lightweights from their engine code stampings, these factory racers were conferred with a racing version of the new 426 Hemi a full year before the street version of the engine was available to the general public. The race-hardened lightweight Hemi engine received a magnesium cross-ram intake manifold, aluminum heads, tubular headers, an aluminum water pump along with a higher compression ratio and modified piston design. It was rated at 425 horsepower, but in reality produced more in the neighborhood of 550 wampin' stompin' ponies. Since the equation here again was powerful engine plus less car weight equals go faster, the weight reduction theme was applied throughout the car. Because the NHRA banned aluminum and fiberglass body components after the 1964 racing season, Chrysler innovated once again and applied an acid dip process to reduce body panel and bumper sheet metal thickness by 60%, as well as deleting the outside mirrors, radio, heater, and rear seat. How competitive were they? 
These could chew up the quarter mile in about 10 to 11 seconds and won numerous stock eliminator and super stock NHRA events. With factory support and equipment, super stock drag racing was a wild and woolly time in the 1960s. In 1967, the Plymouth Belvedere II with the RO23 option and the Dodge Coronet with the WO23 option were Chrysler's intermediate B bodies that took on Ford's 427 Fairlanes and Chevrolet's 396 Camaros. As with the 1965s, the cars were lightweighted with body panels acid dipped for material reduction and radio, heater, carpet, sound deadening, and rear seats removed. 50 examples of each division's stock appearing but definitely not street legal cars were produced that were slightly milder versions of the 1965 models. Milder because the engines didn't include some of the race components of the 65s. Gone was the magnesium cross-ram intake manifold and offset location of the dual four-barrel carburetors as NHRA rules mandated that the engine must include the same inline dual-quad setup as the Hemi street version engines. Nineteen sixty-eight is the year that Chrysler opened the floodgates and finally offered the four twenty-six Hemi in its A-body Dodge Dart and Plymouth Barracuda compact models, and created the Apex Predator factory drag cars of the time. These were the legendary and production limited Dodge Dart Hurst Hemi with the LO two three option, and the Plymouth Barracuda Hurst Hemi with the BO two nine option. They were nicknamed the A-Bombs and were once again factory's super stock drag racing lightweight specials. And light they were. The compact body, monster Hemi engine, and the applied mass minimization measures saw these cars weigh in at only 3,000 pounds. They were delivered to the customer with only primer coat paint and gel coated fiberglass fenders and hood for the customer to paint in their own racing livery. Beneath that fiberglass hood, an underrated 425 horsepower 426 cubic inch Hemi engine was jammed into the engine bay with the usual race spec internal components. The cross ram intake manifold made a return, and the car also included tubular exhaust headers. It was definitely quick, with quarter mile blasts in the low 10 second range right from the factory, and a 9 second range possible with some race slicks installed and applied tuning dial in. These were Chrysler's factory racing program's most lethal offerings for the drag strip in the 1960s and predecessors to the drag package cars that the automakers started offering again in 2009 and continues to do so to this day. It's an exciting time once again for factory drag race cars and proves that win on Sunday, sell on Monday still rings true. Thanks for watching this video and we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to receive new content release messaging.